I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Wednesday, September the 2nd, brought to you in part by Zactran. Bovine respiratory disease steals pounds, Zactran pounds back. Remember to observe your 35 day withdrawal period after treatment. For more information, go to Zactran.com or visit with your BI representative. Fake steak. Uh, that's the latest. Uh, if you guys were on social media with me, uh, you saw me share that. But it, this is unbelievable. If we haven't had enough uh, talk about fake meat uh, trying to go in and steal a part of our market share, uh, like fake products that have stolen significant market share from your dairy industry as much as 15%, which we cannot stand, guys. But uh, the one nice thing about uh, the fake meat is We've always kind of known that it was just going to be for your ground product. Uh, talked to a lot of uh, experts in the field, not making it, but uh, as far as investigating it and looking at it, and they've always said that, uh, you know, there's no way that they can replicate uh, the texture of the muscle cuts, uh, which, which is comforting, uh, you know, because it's amazing what they can do these days. But uh, we won't have to worry about them being able to replicate that uh, the texture, the flavor, the you know the amount of uh, of uh, fat or finish within those muscle cuts, the things that we all love about eating steak. Well, we've got an Israeli company startup called Redefine Meat, and they are trying to use uh, 3D printers somehow to make this fake product into something that replicates a steak. And if you guys look at the picture, it's ridiculous. Anybody that would uh, mistake that for a steak, uh, I mean, are not even smart enough to be to let them use knives. So, uh, you know, we shouldn't have to worry about somebody like that. But it's just unbelievable what they're trying to do. And wh what I can't get over is how hard they are, are working trying to trick themselves into thinking that they're, they're getting something real. It, it's unbelievable and it costs way more and it's not as healthy for you. They keep talking about how it's more healthy for the environment. I, I, would, I would argue with that uh, big time too. Uh, there's nobody that's a better steward for the environment than the uh, cattle producers, but this is unbelievable how, how people are, are trying to uh, get into to the, to, uh, the meat industry and take advantage. And hell of it is, uh, your, your, your bigger packers uh, the corporate packers are the ones that are providing the, the biggest amount of research and development dollars for this, which means that they don't really care about you, uh, the producers of the product that they depend on to make the millions and millions of dollars that they make. They just want to keep their share of the protein. And uh, we've, we've known that, but uh, it doesn't hurt to get reminded about it. But uh, uh, these printers uh, that, that this startup company is making, uh, they're not saying how much they're going to cost, and I'm sure it'll be big time, but the, they're, they're hoping to release these printers. They're, they're not really wanting to make the product just themselves, but Redefine Meat is wanting to sell these 3D printers uh, to outfits, and, and uh, they say that the, the printers could print as much as 44 pounds of meat per hour. So that's, that's just right around 350 pounds of, of meat per day. Uh, I don't think we have to worry about them too much, guys. But uh, what else is going on in the industry? Uh, your Southern Plains is now trading at a premium to the Northern Plains on, uh, on fed cattle. And this is unbelievable. Uh, you know, it hasn't been that long ago that we were so worried about the, the Southern Plains being backed up with the big cattle. And we've known that for quite a while, the Northern Plains has been fairly current. But uh, all of a sudden now, the Southern Plains is trading at a premium. You know, they were trucking cattle from Southern Kansas up into Nebraska and Iowa here just a few weeks ago, guys. And now we've got the Southern Plains, Kansas and Texas on Tuesday sold at 104. And you couldn't squeeze that much in, in uh, Iowa or Nebraska yet. Of course, the market hasn't been fully established yet. But if you look at the uh, the, the uh, dress prices too, that it, it's yeah, that's the truth, guys. But uh, but not on feeder cattle. On feeder cattle, it's the exact opposite. Uh, your big corporate feeders in the Southern Plains 
have, have suddenly backed off of these cattle. I mean, you can tell it when you go to these, uh, these big high volume markets, it depends so much on your corporate buyers. Uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma National Stockyards being uh, probably the main one. They have suffered two sharp down weeks now, 10 to $15 of loss in their feeder cattle prices over the last two weeks. And, and that's mainly because your big uh, corporate feeders are out of the market for the most part. And uh, they, they just don't have any place to put the cattle anymore. And uh, you know, everything's fine and dandy till you run out of places to put them and likely not gonna get too aggressive about entering the market uh, as they move fat cattle out because they're gonna need pen space for these fall delivery cattle that they've already purchased uh, either private treaty or on the video but uh, th this is quite a deal guys but uh, you know talking about uh, uh, the, the flip-flop on the premium on the, on the cattle but you can just go uh, up into uh, uh, Oklahoma and you get up into southern Kansas and you see that uh, we're really missing the demand from your corporate feeders but as you get on up into uh, central Kansas and north whenever you see your uh, farmer feeders kind of take over uh, it, it's uh, it's pretty evident that uh, that uh, you know the the lack of the corporate buying in the south is making a big difference in the price of these feeder cattle. Of course, this time of year when they're looking at a bumper crop, your farmer feeders and your northern plains feeders are always going to be more aggressive than the southern plains guys that don't uh, enjoy all of that uh, plentiful. Uh, grain that they do up north but uh, that, that fake stick deal I tell you what uh, if you guys uh, can believe that but uh, I tell you what uh, if, if you're, you're thinking about uh, by, um, voting Democrat in November uh, you might want to take another look at that because these these big companies know that if we ever get Democrats in there they are going to start limiting our, our beef uh, production there and and so these these uh, these companies these startup companies these uh, even like I said your big corporate packers they are wanting to be able to take advantage of that because uh, like I said on a recent visit they're wanting to make real beef a luxury item so if, if we if we make that a luxury item we cut down production so much that your everyday consumer can't afford to do it anymore well then who's going to provide that protein there and that's what those people are there to do but I tell you what it, voting Democrat this November is the scariest thing in the world if you've got any interest at all in animal agriculture because it, it is it is going to be devastating uh, for what we do there if this Green New Deal is, is talking about you know cutting so much production uh, and cattle feeding that, that you can't believe it uh, I tell you what, you you farmers and ranchers and uh, cattle producers, cattle people uh, need to be really, really concerned about the BLM, which we all know stands for Bureau of Land Management. And uh, you know, I, I can't understand why all these inner city uh, thugs are getting so worried about the BLM. But uh, that you guys sure need to be worried about the BLM. They can cut your grazing of federal lands. I mean, with no notice. They can just cut them. Uh, as foolish as they are, you see how their conservation practices have worked. The whole state of California is on fire, basically. And uh, it reminds me of a few years ago. You remember the, that uh, Ronald Reagan's presidential library was uh, in the threat of a fire. And they turned a bunch of goats in there right behind them. And they grazed that off. And then magically the fire didn't get in there too close to that building and set it on. Huh. Maybe if you grazed uh, some of that uh, uh, brush and, and uh, legumes and, and all that forage in there that's in amongst those trees and close to it and in between, maybe it would cut down on these fires. Maybe if you would allow the logging industry to go in there and clean that out once in a while, uh, that, that that would be a good way to do it. But I tell you what, these people are foolish. And so, you, you know, we just have to stay ahead of them with our votes. And like I said before, we don't have a lot of votes, so we have to try to uh, influence as many people as we can because I tell you what, uh, a lot of people look up to you guys, uh, you cattle producers. They feel like you're salt of the earth and they look up to you 
and I, I think it's a good deal that, that you you get a little bit more outspoken uh, outspoken I mean on um, on some of this political stuff and I know we don't really like to do it but uh, I tell you what when you get an opportunity uh, to, to fly a flag to fly a Trump uh, banner do something that lets uh, other people know say hey those guys over there that, that ranch over there or farm over there they're they're kind of behind that Trump deal you know uh, and man he's really wooled them around on these on these exports and things no you know uh, we need to, to show our patriotism and show people who we're in support of and I think a lot of people look up to us and they need to, uh, to learn that too but let's look at the board for Tuesday, October live cattle futures up 17 cents at 105.47. December was also up 17 cents at 109.15. Going out from there, down just two cents to up two dollars and seventy cents on your farthest out traded month, month, which is February of 2022. September feeder cattle down 17 cents at 140.12. There was wide springs uh, swings in that uh, feeder cattle. Uh, traded months there and, and uh, but they didn't settle too far from steady October was up two cents at 140.65 going out front on your feeder cattle up 15 cents to up 70 your fat cattle trade was fairly active on Tuesday uh, and it was lower again uh, we kind of felt like it was going to be lower but uh, you know uh, your prognosticators uh, come out on Monday and said it was going to be lower so everybody was just okay with that well, when I've told you guys a million times, when your packers start bidding on a Monday or Tuesday, they need cattle. So, uh, you know, but nobody tried to, to, to even hold the market steady. Immediately, Tuesday morning, we were selling significant numbers of cattle lower. Southern Plains was mostly a dollar lower live. Uh, Northern Plains, one to two dollars lower live. Dress sales, three dollars lower live. Uh, 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 not live, but dressed. Uh, although we haven't seen the market necessarily set, there's been a significant number of cattle to sell and it's going to be hard to get us off what we've already established here. Iowa, 2,800 head, uh, selling from 102.5 to 104, but mostly 103. And dress sales from 162 to 163 in Iowa. Nebraska, 5,200 head, all live sales at 103. You know, that's sure $2 lower, if not more. Uh, and then dress sales from 163 to 164. Kansas, 3,600 head, 103 to mostly 104. That's a buck lower. And Texas, 6,300 head, all at 104. You got to give it to the Texas cattle sellers, uh, the few cash sellers that are still around, and it's hard to find them. But, you know, they went from trading a couple bucks back to everybody to all, to all of a sudden they're trading at a premium to everybody. So that tells me they've gotten rid of these backlog cattle. Uh, we don't have any more uh, hippopotamuses or rhinoceroses to sell. Uh, we've pretty much got caught up on them. As a whole, our cattle are still heavier than what we would like for them to be, heavier than what they've been uh, in recent years in the five-year average. But we've got to be whittling on them, guys. Box beef cutout values have kind of hit some uh, support now after they, they were up and up and up and went up longer than we thought they should have seasonally and then they dropped back down some and, and trading kind of in a steady mode right now. Choice cuts 228.34 up just 39 cents and select down just 57 cents at 214.75. Let's talk about your feeder cattle markets and what's going on there. Uh, don't forget on Labor Day, we've got some, most of your big high volume sales are closed, but Torrington Livestock Markets always has a big special on Labor Day, and Russell Livestock Market, Russell, Iowa, they've got a huge run, and you can uh, bid, view and bid there on dvauction.com at Russell Livestock. But let's talk about your uh, real-time index on DV Auction late in the day on Tuesday. 139.40, down 62 cents. You know, I was kind of surprised that it held on Monday with so many of your Southern Plains sales so much sharply lower. Uh, but on Tuesday, as you, we added that in, uh, then we started seeing some pretty significant losses on your index levels there. How about Ozarks Regional Stockyards? West Plains, Missouri, 2,400 head there, and then another 1,200 
on their in-house video. I tell you what, they just learned how to do that in-house video here a couple of weeks ago, and now it's starting to be a regular thing already. But in the brick and mortar sale ring there, your calves were two to four dollars higher with spots as much as six dollars higher. That's your feeding calves all the way down to your stalker type calves there. Didn't have really any true yearlings on, on hand to test, but the few that were there sold on a higher undertone. But uh, some of that hurricane rain has worked through there. And so they've got good demands to turn these, turn some cattle back out because they they had those uh, pastures pretty short. But I tell you what, in those rocks there in the Ozarks, when they get a rain, man, that grass will pop all of a sudden, and the guys just can't stand it. They got to get something turned out there, and that's kind of what they did there on uh, Tuesday at uh, West Plains, Missouri. And on the in-house video, they had several lots that sold pretty good. Best one I saw was 60 head of heifers there. Uh, local cattle weighed 825 pounds at 132.50. How about uh, Fredonia Livestock Auction, Fredonia, Kansas, my friends there, Brad Hahn and company there. They had about 1,200 head of feeders there. And remember, they had a whale of a sale a week ago, so they're kind of hard to do the comparison on there. But you don't see the, this market reported anywhere else. But it looked about six to eight bucks lower than the, the extreme highs of the special that they had last week. But uh, probably, you know, your, your offering was not going to be quite as attractive as it was on their big uh, anniversary special. But still sold some cattle pretty impressive there. 54 head of 1,049 pound steers. I tell you what, those would be warmed up pretty good at $125 in Fredonia, Kansas. And that's not really the, the place that you would sell uh, those weight and kind of cattle. It'd be a whole lot further north, but they still sold really well. How about uh, Rezac Livestock Commission? Denny Rezac, St. Mary's, Kansas. They had about 1,350 head of feeder cattle there and a uh, very impressive market there. They were far enough up into Kansas that they didn't see the, the losses. And I've told you that down in the Southern Plains, you, you uh, saw some pretty significant losses with your corporates not pushing on the market. But uh, man, not in St. Mary's, Kansas. If you look at their market report, their best tested weights of feeder cattle were fully steady, if not a little higher on the heifers. But uh, you look at this market report and look at your best tested weights there. Uh, this is an automated market report pulled from Cattle Market Central through DV Auction. But your steers, 222 head of the seven weight steers, averaged 769 pounds with a weighted average price of 143.18. That was uh, that pretty close to steady, guys. And 485 pound of eight weight steers averaged 848 and uh, they had a weighted average price of 140.85. That was very close to steady too. So uh, look at your heifers. How about the best tested weight group of heifers? 200 head of those weighed 774 at 134.27 on the weighted average price. And that was actually a buck and a half higher on the weighted average price than a week ago. Let's look at some other places. How about Seven Rivers Livestock Commission Emmett, Idaho. I'm going to be there uh, first part of October there. They've got a big uh, barbecue special and they're going to have me come in there and speak. And then uh, the day after I'll be going down to Twin Falls, but uh, looking forward to going out to Idaho and uh, speaking to some people out there. But uh, yeah, that's going to be an exciting time and a good time to go out there and hopefully see some country and see some colors out there but uh, they they sell cattle pretty darn good out there too and then a small town of Emmett Idaho but look at these steers almost index steers weighing close to 800 pounds 90 head weighed 787 pounds at 142 and that, that's a lot higher than your real-time index but then I was talking to Eric Dries there and he told me that uh, they had a hell of a calf sale too 68 head of uh, pretty fancy weaned Two rounds of shots, uh, Angus and, and uh, you know, Smoky Charlays, 68 head of steers, 600 pounds there, 160.50 uh, in Idaho, guys. That's pretty darn good. How about North Platte Stockyards? My friend Kyle Lehman, he's making a go with that sale there, and he's a heck of a good auctioneer. 52 head, 889 pound steers bring 140.50, but the best quote that I saw anywhere on Tuesday come out of Kimball Livestock Exchange in Kimball, South Dakota. 52 head, 815 pound steers, bring 148.50. And that's your feeder flash for Wednesday.